Welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. I'm joined by Darren Mankey next, the Chief Security Insights and Global Threat Alliances at FortiGuard Labs. Derek, welcome back to the program. Hey, it's great to be here again. It's been a, a uh, a lot of stuff's happened since we last talked. So Derek, one of the things that was really surprising from this year's Global Threat Landscape Report is a 10, more than 10 X increase in ransomware. What's going on? What have you guys seen? Yeah, so uh, th th this is is massive. We're talking over a thousand percent over a 10, uh, 10 X increase. This has been building, Lisa. This, this has been building since uh, December of 2020. Up until then, we saw a relatively low uh, high watermark with ransomware. Um, it had taken a hiatus really because cyber criminals were going after COVID-19 lawyers and doing some other things at the time. Uh, but we did see a, a seven uh, fold increase in December, 2020. That has absolutely conti uh, continued this year into momentum up until today. It continues to build, never subsided. Now it's built to this monster, you know, almost 11 times increase from, from what we saw back last December. And what the, and the reason, it, what's fueling this is uh, new verticals that cyber criminals are targeting. We've seen the usual suspects like telecommunication, mm -hmm. government in uh, position one and two, but new verticals that have risen up into the uh, third and fourth position following are MSSP, and this is on the heels of the Kaseya attack, of course, that happened in 2021, as well as operational technology. There's actually four segments. There's transportation, uh, automotive, manufacturing, and then of course, energy and utility all subsequent to each other. So there's a huge focus now on, on OT and MSSP for cyber criminals. One of the things that we saw last year this time was that attackers had shifted their focus away from enterprise infrastructure devices to home networks and consumer grade products. And now it looks like they're focusing on both. Are you seeing that? Yes, absolutely, uh, in, in two ways. So first of all, again, this is a kill chain that we talk about. They have to get a, a foothold into the infrastructure and then they can load things like ransomware on there. They can load things like information stealers as an example. Uh, the way they do that is through botnets. And uh, what we reported in this, um, in the first half of 2021 is that Mirai, which is about a two to three year old botnet now, is, is number one by far. It, it was the most prevalent botnet we've seen. Of course, the thing about Mirai is that it's an IoT based botnet. So it sits on devices uh, sitting inside uh, consumer networks, as an example, or home networks, right? And that, and that can be a big problem. So that's the targets that cyber criminals are using. The other thing that we saw that was interesting was that one in four organizations detected malvertising. And so what that means, uh, Lisa, is that cyber criminals are shifting their tactics from going just from cloud-based or centralized email phishing campaigns to uh, web-borne threats, right? So they're infecting sites, waterhole attacks, where you know people will go to read uh, their, their, their daily updates, as an example, things that they do as part of their habits. Um, they're getting sent links to these sites, and when they go to it, it's actually installing those botnets onto those systems so they can get a foothold. We've also seen scare tactics, right? So they're doing new social engineering lures, pretending to be human resource departments, uh, you know, uh, uh, IT staff and personnel as an example with pop-ups through the web browser that look like these people to fill out different forms and, and ultimately get infected on, on uh, home devices. Well, the home device use is proliferate, continues because we are still in this work from home, work from anywhere environment. Is that, do you think a big factor in this increase from 7X to nearly 11X? It is a factor, absolutely. Yeah, like I said, it's it's also, it, it's a hybrid of sorts. Uh, so a lot of that activity is going to the MSSP uh, angle, like I said, uh, to, to the OT and to, to those new verticals, which by the way, are actually even larger than traditional targets in the past, like uh, finance and banking is actually lower than that as an example. So yeah, we are seeing a shift to that. And like I said, that's that's further uh, backed up from what we're seeing um, with the, 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 the botnet activity specifically with um, Mariah too. Are you seeing anything in terms of the ferocity? We know that the volume is increasing. Are they becoming more ferocious, these attacks? Yeah, there, there is, there's a lot of aggression out there, certainly from, from cyber criminals. And I would say that the velocity is increasing, but the amount, if we look at the cyber criminal ecosystem, the, the stakeholders, right, um, that is increasing. It's not just one or two campaigns that we're seeing. Again, we're seeing, this has been a record pace this year, almost every, week we've seen one or two significant you know cybersecurity events that are happening that is a dramatic shift compared to 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 last year or even you know two years ago too 
And this is because um, because the cyber criminals are getting deeper pockets now. They're they're becoming more well funded, and they have business partners, affiliates that they're hiring. Each one of those has their own methodology, and they're getting paid big. We're talking up to seventy to eighty percent commission, just if they actually successfully you know infect someone that pays for the ransom, as an example. And so that's really what's driving this too. It's 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 a combination of this kind of perfect storm, as we call it, right? You have this growing attack surface, work from home uh, environment. Um, and footholds into those networks, but you have a whole bunch of other people now on the bad side that are orchestrating this and executing the attacks too. So what can organizations do to start to slow down or limit the impacts of this growing ransomware as a service? Yeah, great question. Um, everybody has their role in this, I say, right? So uh, if we look at from a strategic point of view, we have to disrupt cybercrime. How do we do that? Um, it starts with the kill chain. It starts with trying to build resilient networks. So things like uh, ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, uh, SD-WAN as an example, uh, as an example, pr protecting that WAN infrastructure. Because um, that's where the threats are floating to, right? That's how they get the initial foothold. So anything we can do on the on the you know preventive preventative side, making uh, networks more resilient. Um, also, education and training is really key. Things like multi-factor authentication are all key to this because if you build that up uh, preventatively, and that's a relatively small investment up front, Lisa, compared to the collateral damage that can happen with these ransomware attacks, so the risk is very high. Um, that goes a long way. It also forces the attackers to, it slows down their velocity. It forces them to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new strategy. So that is a very important piece, but there's also things that we're doing in the industry. There's some good news here too uh, that, that we can talk about because there's, there's things that we can actually do um, apart from that to, to really fight cybercrime, to try to take the cyber criminals offline too. All right, hit me with the good news, Derek. Yeah, so, so a couple of things, right? If we look at the botnet activity, there's a couple of interesting things in there. Yes, we are seeing Mirai rise to the top right now, but we've seen big problems of the past that have gone away or come back not as prolific as before. So two specific examples, uh, Emotet, this was one of the most prolific uh, botnets that was out there for the past two to three years. Um, there was a takedown that happened in January of this year. Uh, it's still on our radar, but immediately after that takedown, it literally dropped to half of the activity it had before. And it's been consistently staying at that low watermark now at that half percentage since, since then, six months later. So that's very good news showing that the actual coordinated efforts that we're getting involved with law enforcement, with our partners and so forth, to take down these are, are actually hitting their supply chain where it hurts, right? So that's good news part one. TrickBot was another example. This was also a notorious botnet. This uh, takedown attempt in Q4 of 2020, it went offline for about six months. Um, it, it, in our landscape report, we actually show that it came back online uh, in about June this year. But again, it came down, it came back weaker and in, in another form is not nearly as prolific as before. So we are hitting them where it hurts. That's, that's the really good news. And we're able to do that through new, um, what I call high resolution intelligence that we're looking at too. Talk to me about that high resolution intelligence. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so this is cutting edge stuff really. It gets me excited and keep, keeps me up at night in a good way because uh, we're, we're looking at this under the microscope, right? It's not just talking about the what. We know there's problems out there. We know there's, there's ransomware. We know there's the botnets, all these things. And that's good to know. And we have to know that. But we're able to actually zoom in on this now and look at, so we, for the first time in the Threat Landscape Report, we've published TTPs, the Techniques, Tactics, Procedures. So it's not just talking about the what, it's talking about the how. How are they doing this? What's their preferred method of getting into systems? How are they trying to move from system to system? Well, and, and exactly how are they doing that? What's the technique? And so we've highlighted that. It's, it's using the MITRE ATT&CK framework, TTP, but this is real-time data. And it's very interesting. And so we're clearly seeing a very heavy focus from um, cyber criminals and attackers to, to get around security controls, to do defense evasion, to do privilege uh, escalation on systems. So in other words, trying to become an administrator so they can take full control of the system. Uh, as an example, lateral movement, uh, there's still a preferred over 75%, 77, I believe, percent of activity we observe from malware was still trying to move from system to system by infecting removable media like thumb drives. And so it's interesting, right? It's a brand new look on, on these, a fresh look, but it's this high resolution is allowing us to get a, a clear image so that when we come to providing strategic guides and solutions and defense, and also even working on these takedown efforts, it allows us to be much more effective. 
So one of the things that you said in the beginning was we talked about the increase in ransomware from last year to this year. You said, I don't think that we've hit that that ceiling yet, but are we at an inflection point? Is the data showing that we're at an inflection point here with being able to get ahead of this? Yeah, I, I, I would like to believe so. Um, it, it There is still a lot of work to be done. Unfortunately, if we look at, you know, there's a, a recent report put out by the Department of Justice in the US saying that, you know, the chance of a, a, a criminal uh, to be, you know, committing a crime uh, to be caught in the US is somewhere between 55 to 60%. The same chance for a cyber criminal lies less than 1%, about 0.5%. And that's the bad news. The good news is we are making progress and sending messages back and seeing results. But I think there's still a long road ahead. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot of work to be done. We're heading in the right direction. But like I said, Lisa, it's not just about that. It's everyone has, has their role in this, all the way down to organizations and end users. If they're doing their part, making their networks more resilient through this, uh, through all of the, you know, increasing their security stack and, and strategy, um, that is also really going to stop the, you know, really ultimately the profiteering um, that that wave, you know, because that continues to build too. So it's it's a multi-stakeholder effort, and I believe we are, we are getting there. But I continue still, uh, you know, I continue to expect the the ransomware wave to build in the meantime. On the end user front, that's always one of the vectors that we talk about. It's people, right? It's there's yeah. so there's so much sophistication in these attacks that even security folks and experts are nearly fooled by them. What are some of the things that you're seeing that governments are taking action on? Some recent announcements from the, the White House, but other organizations like Interpol, the World Economic Forum, Cyber Crime yeah. Unit. What are some of the things that governments are doing that you're seeing that is really advantageous here for the good guys? Yeah, so absolutely. This is all about collaboration. Governments are really focused on public private sector collaboration. Um, so we've seen this across the board. Uh, with FortiGuard Labs, we're on the forefront with this and, and it's really exciting to see that. It's great. Uh, there, there, there's always been a lot of will to work together, but we're starting to see action now, right? Um, Interpol is a great example. They recently this year held a high level forum on ransomware. I was uh, actually spoke and was part of that forum as well too. And the takeaways from that event were that we, this was a message to the world that public private sector, we need they actually called ransomware a pandemic, which is what I've referred to it as uh, uh, before in itself as well too, because it is becoming that much of a problem and that we need to work together to be able to create action, action, of, uh, action against this, measure success, become more strategic. The World Economic Forum, uh, we're, we're uh, leading a project called the Partnership Against uh, the Cybercrime Threat Map Project. And this is to identify not just all the stuff we talked about in the Threat Landscape Report, but also looking at um, you know, things like how many different ransomware gangs are, are there out there? Uh, what are the money laundering networks look like? It's that side, side of the supply chain to map out so that we can work together to actually take down those efforts. But it, it really is about this collaborative action that's happening and it's um, yeah, innovation and there's uh, R&D behind this as well that's coming to the table to be able to make, you know, make it impactful. So it sounds to me like ransomware is no longer a, for any organization in any, any industry, you were talking about the expansion of verticals. It's no longer a, if this happens to us, but a matter of when, and how do we actually prepare to remediate, yes. prevent any damage? Yeah, absolutely. How do we prepare? The other thing is that there's a lot of, um, you know, with just the nature of, of, of cyber, there's a lot of uh, connectivity. There's a lot of different, uh, it's not just always siloed attacks, right? We saw that with Colonial, obviously this year, where you have attacks on, on IT that can affect consumers right down to consumers right and so for that very reason um everybody's infected in this uh it, it truly is a pandemic i believe on its own uh, but the good news is there's a lot of smart people uh on the good side and, and you know that's what gets me excited like i said we're working with a lot of these initiatives and like i said some of those examples i called up before we're actually starting to see measurable progress against this as well that's good wow never a dull day i'm sure in your world any thing that you think when we talk about this again in a few more months, uh, the second half of 2021, anything that, that you predict crystal ball wise that we're going to see? Yeah, I, I think that we're going to continue to see more of the, uh, I mean, ransomware, absolutely more of the um, targeted attacks. That's been a shift this year that we've seen, right? So instead of just trying to infect everybody for ransom as an example, going after some of these new, um, you know, high profile targets, I think we're going to continue to see that happening from uh, the ransomware side. And, and, and because of that, 
the average cost of these data breaches, I think they're going to continue to increase. Um, it already did uh, in, uh, in, in 20, uh, 2021, as an example, if we look at the cost of a data breach report, it's gone up to about $5 million US on average. I, I think that's going to continue uh, to increase as well, too. And then the other thing, too, is uh, I think that we're going to start to see more um, more more action on the good side like we talked about there was already a record amount of takedowns that have happened five takedowns that happened in january um there were um, arrests made to these business partners that was also new so i'm expecting to see a lot more of that coming out uh, uh towards the end of the year too so as the challenges persist so do the good things that are coming out of this yeah. Derek, where can folks go to get this first half 2021 global threat landscape what's the url that they can go to yeah, you can check out all, all of our updates and blogs, including threat landscape reports on blog.fortinet.com under our threat research category. Excellent, I read that blog, it's fantastic. Derek, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for breaking this down for us, showing what's going on, both the challenging things as well as the good news. I look forward to our next conversation. Absolutely, it's great chatting with you again, Lisa, thanks. Likewise, for Derek Mankey, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation.